Welcome to the Lesson 1, Science and Space, uh, highlighting video for Unit 1 of 4th grade, Matter and Energy. Anything that you see highlighted in yellow, you should also be highlighting in your student reader. The student reader is the one pictured over here to the bottom left-hand side. Experimenting in Space. Astronauts from around the world live together in a moving space laboratory far above Earth. This lab orbits 386 kilometers, or 240 miles, above Earth. It is called the International Space Station. Scientists on the space station are busy conducting different experiments. For example, scientists have sent 18 zebrafish into space. They want to see whether the muscles of the fish get weaker compared to on Earth. This research is important because astronauts lose muscle mass in space. The zebrafish in space experiment will help scientists understand why and how this happens. The STEM cycle. The experiments on the space station are part of science. Science is all knowledge learned from experiments. Science is the search for explanations about the natural world. Scientists look for the causes of what they observe in the world around them. Scientists use evidence to form conclusions that support those explanations. Science is part of a larger cycle that includes engineering, math, and technology. This cycle is called the STEM cycle. Engineers apply scientific knowledge to create new technologies that solve problems. Math is a tool that both scientists and engineers use to capture results and communicate those results to others. Following a scientific process. Scientists use a scientific process to guide them as they try to answer questions about the world around them. This process helps scientists go form a question to a database or go from a question to a database conclusion. Scientists always begin with a question. The question helps scientists figure out exactly what they're trying to find out. Scientists studying the zebrafish have a question that they are trying to answer. How does living in space affect a zebrafish's muscles? Every year, the amount of scientific knowledge grows. Scientists use this existing body of knowledge to create their question. For example, scientists need to know that zebrafish are a kind of fish that live in fresh water. They also need to know what kind of food zebrafish need to survive. After scientists have researched their question, they form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a statement that can be proved true or false. An example of a hypothesis is, living in space causes zebrafish to lose muscle mass. Another hypothesis would be, living in space has no effect on the muscle mass of zebrafish. Scientists then write a summary of the experiment they will conduct to test their hypothesis. The summary should include the basics of the data to be collected, the variables that will be tested, and the parts of the experiment that will remain constant in each test or trial. Scientists will then list materials needed and the procedure they will follow. A procedure is like a step-by-step -step recipe for the experiment. A good procedure will let someone else repeat the experiment exactly. Scientists also draw a scientific diagram. They do this so anyone can use the same materials and follow the same steps to get similar results. They also want to create a record of their thinking. Scientists then conduct an experiment. An experiment is a procedure designed to test whether a hypothesis is true, false, or inconclusive. Inconclusive results do not confirm or deny the hypothesis. As scientists conduct experiments, they gather data. Data are numbers and observations gathered from an experiment. Scientists use different tools for gathering data. The zebrafish experiment is one of many experiments taking place on the International Space Station. It seeks to prove or disprove the hypothesis that living in space causes zebrafish to lose muscle mass. Scientists use experiments to look for patterns in data. 
A pattern is something that happens in a regular and repeated way. A pattern sometimes shows a cause and effect relationship where one event or thing is the result of the other. In order to discover a cause and effect relationship, scientists design experiments in a way that shows how changes to one thing cause something else to change in a predictable way. Scientists do this in a very specific way with variables and constants. A variable is something you want to change. One kind of experiment is a controlled experiment. In a controlled experiment, there is usually one variable being tested. After data has been collected, scientists form a conclude, conclusion. The conclusion uses data from the experiment to explain why the hypothesis is true, false, or inconclusive. Scientists are just beginning to experiment with zebrafish in space. They have not yet gathered enough data to come up with a conclusion. Matter in space. Whether in space or on Earth, all matter shares certain characteristics. Matter is everything that has mass and takes up space. Both non-living things and living things are made up of matter. Even though atoms make up both living and non-living things, atoms are not alive. The space station is matter. The zebrafish are matter, as is the water they live in. Astronauts are also matter. All matter is made up of tiny parts that are too small to be seen. These parts are called atoms. An atom is the smallest piece of matter that has the properties of an element. An element is a substance entirely made up of one kind of atom. Oxygen is an element. Hydrogen is another element. There are 118 different kinds of elements. Elements have unique properties because of the kinds of atoms that make them up. Many billions of atoms make up even a single grain of sand. For example, think about a grapefruit. If each atom in the grapefruit were the size of a blueberry, the grapefruit would have to be the size of Earth. There are so many atoms in just one grapefruit that they are impossible to count. Imagine having to fill up the entire planet with blueberries. That's about how many atoms there are in one grapefruit. Atoms themselves are made up of smaller particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. These smaller particles are much smaller than the atom itself. Because atoms are so tiny, scientists use scale to better understand the size of an atom, its smaller parts, and how it relates to everyday substances. Scale is the size, extent, or importance, or magnitude, of something relative to something else. For example, the protons and neutrons group together in the atom's core. The core is called the nucleus. If the atom is the size of a blueberry, and you open the blueberry up, the nucleus would be too small to see. If you were to make the blueberry the size of a football field, you would just be able to see the nucleus. It would be the size of a small marble. The electrons are much smaller than the protons and neutrons. They are in constant motion around the nucleus. However, most of the atom is filled with empty space. There are huge amounts of space between each of the electrons and between the electrons and the nucleus. Properties of matter. Atoms are like Lego pieces. They can join together in different ways. The different ways that atoms join together make all of the matter in the universe. Two or more atoms joined together are called a molecule. Water is an example of a molecule. It is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Matter has different properties depending on the number and different kinds of atoms that make it up. A property is an observable or measurable characteristic of matter. For example, Water's properties are a result of how, high, of how the hydrogen and oxygen atoms join together. Scientists are interested in a substance's properties because properties can help scientists identify different kinds of matter. Properties include texture, flexibility, color, state of matter, and odor. For example, water can be a solid, when it's ice, liquid, or gas when it's water vapor.
It is colorless and odorless. Measuring matter. Measurements are an important part of science. Scientists use the metric system, which communicates measurements of mass or distance in units such as grams and meters. Mass is an immeasurable property of matter. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter that makes up an object. Mass is measured in grams. Mass, mass increases as the number and size of atoms increase in an object. Volume is another measurable property of matter. Volume is a measure of how much space an object or substance takes up. Matter exists in three dimensions, so both mass and volume are needed to accurately describe matter. Check out our next video for lesson one review questions.